O oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Uh, Father, we thank you for this privilege once again to stand before the people of God by way of social media. We thank you for this day. We give you thanks for all things. The word of God says, let all that I am praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live, says the psalmist in 146. I will sing praises to my God with my dying breath. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He has made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. He will be your God, O Jerusalem, throughout the generations. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. We praise you. And we give you thanks in all things. Even in the midst of our trial, we give you thanks. We ask, O Lord, that your presence be manifest among us. We know that you're the God who's everywhere. You're the God who's even in the midst of a storm. We give you thanks. We give you praise this morning. We pray your anointing rests upon us. We pray your divine presence with everyone looking in, everyone that will hear our message today. Uh, those that are in harm's way we pray that you'll protect them and cover them under the shadow of your wing and that's our desire that's our confidence as well uh, we thank you that we are privileged to abide under the shadow of the almighty we thank you for that and we praise you for that we pray your peace your comfort your joy your grace your protection, your provisions, your refuge, everything that you are, we draw from it even this morning. We exalt your glorious name. Now, Father, be with us as we endeavor to share your word today. Be with us and be with those that are looking in in their homes from every location, even around this world, even uh, in these United States and certainly in this state of Louisiana and those that are part of this fellowship uh, right where they are and the opportunity that they have for today. You are a very present help in our time of need. We give you thanks today in Jesus' name. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, to those that join with us today, we speak the blessings and the presence of God in your home, in your gathering, in your family. Ah, this is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our shelter. Uh, we honor and exalt him today. And we thank you, and we pray for God's grace for those that are traveling today. And those that are of us that will endure the impact of Hurricane Ida. God has been faithful. He is faithful. And he will continue to be faithful. That's our confidence in him. We trust in the faithful God. Uh, for those traveling and those of us that are staying put, God is still faithful. Those that are alone, those that are gathered with family, God is still faithful to be present and to protect and provide. 
and those of us that have anxieties from Katrina and other storms, God's grace is sufficient to carry us through even this time. And all of us here in Southeast Louisiana, we trust in God. Thank you for praying with us and for us. We're going to share the Word of God with you uh, in the next few moments. Uh, we probably will not be on long. We are trying to uh, be wise about uh, the time online. We know that there will be challenges to our, to our ability to uh, stay online, so we're going to be as brief as possible today. So Sister Simon is going to come with our scripture reading for today and other encouragements or announcements that she has. And so, blessings upon your house. Thanks for joining us this morning. We love you. We love seeing you looking back at us. We thank you for when names pop up, showing that you're online with us. That's always a blessing to us. So, Sister Simon, if you will. Good morning and bless the Lord. We welcome you on this glorious Lord Day, Lord's Day. And I will be reading this morning from Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues, and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto thee, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and the Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The word of the Lord this morning is blessed. I thank God for his word. Uh, I've gotten several calls and calls from around the country uh, Yes, we're expecting the landfall of Hurricane Ida. Uh, we're already experiencing gusty winds and rain. Um, and a lot of people are alarmed and feeling uneasy. But this morning, I want to encourage you because God was faithful during Katrina. He brought us out and he'll do it again. And I want you to trust and rely on him no matter what happens. He's still God. He's still God. Psalm 34 said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And verse 4 says, for all of you who are feeling uncomfortable and fear may try to creep in, know this. The Lord said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So no matter what's going on, uh, I just heard 
the 911 emergency line in the greater New Orleans, in the New Orleans area is having technical difficulties. But I want to tell you this morning, you can call on the name of the Lord and he will answer because he promised in his word never to leave us, never to forsake us. So this morning, call on Jesus and praise him at all times. He is our deliverer, even in the midst of the storm. God bless you this morning. Amen, 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 amen. We should have uh, turned Sister Simon loose there. Yeah, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Yes, indeed. Uh, our trust is in Almighty God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, we'll be brief this morning. However, uh, I want to encourage us through uh, a message this morning. The title of it is Willfully and Willingly willfully and willingly. Uh, this actually was inspired by one of the devotional readings uh, this past week that Dr. Deidre uh, Johnson posted, and it uh, inspired me to dig a little bit deeper into the Word and to understand a challenge that we have as we journey through life. It's a challenge, however, there's an answer, there's a mindset, there's a perspective that God has provisioned us to take uh, in order to deal with circumstances such as these that we're dealing with even right now. And any circumstance that you're going through, a challenge that you're going through, uh, there's a mindset, there's a perspective uh, there's an approach. Uh, 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 there is uh, a, a biblical kingdom, godly perspective that we must maintain. And, and it's one that God has purposed to restore to us from the very beginning of, of our earthly time. Thank you, Sister Simon, for reading the scriptures today. Uh, and, uh, and, and she read from Matthew chapter 6, uh, where Jesus was giving instructions to the disciples and uh, others on prayer. Uh, let me start off from kind of uh, giving some definition to the, the title because willfully and willingly is a mindset. It's, a, it's an approach and a perspective in our lives. We are, we are creatures, we are human beings, and we journey through life making decisions and choices. And that's the way we were created to be free moral agents. We, are, we have free choice. We can choose to do whatever in our walk, in our lives. And that's the challenge for us is how do we make these decisions and choices in life? And I submit to you that this was set up a long time ago, our, our, our tendency. Because whatever we do, we do it willfully and willingly. Yes, we make choices in life, and that means we voluntarily do things, we purposefully do things, we deliberately do things, we intentionally do things. We are eagerly compliant with whatever drives us on the inside. And so we are free to do whatever we choose to do. Uh, willfully and willingly are adverbs. Yes. You, you English students, you, you, you grammarians, you, you, those that are specialists in grammar, you, you know that willfully and willingly are adverbs. They are the ones, the adverbs are the words in our speech that answer the questions when, why, how, where, and how much. And this, 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 this morning, for the next few moments, we're going to talk about our... our 
our why, <laughs> why we do what we do, and it is we do it willingly and willfully. And we choose to because that's what we desire to do. Now, now Jesus gave us something in the prayer that Sister Simon uh, shared with us from Matthew chapter 6. I'm just going to give you uh, verses 7 through 10 because Jesus was, was, was responding uh, to the prayer perspective that were at hand. Uh, actually, Sister Simon read Matthew 6, 5, and, and I'm reading from the New uh, Living Translation. And Jesus says, when you pray, do not be like hypocrites who love to pray publicly or on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is the reward they will ever get. That's all the reward they'll ever get is what he said. So he was giving some guidelines on what real prayer is about. And then he said in verse 7, when you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. There is, he's giving some guardrails and guidelines on prayer. But here is where I want to zero in. In verse 9 he says, pray like this. And I think it's significant in, in what he says in this prayer because it gives us a context and a principle that's important for, especially for the message for today, willfully and willingly, because he says, pray like this, our, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. He says, when you pray, don't forget that you're praying to our Father who is in heaven. And he says, may your name be kept holy. And then verse 10 gives me a launching point for the next few moments. It says, may your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For this moment, we ought to think a little bit about Jesus making that as a model, a context for our prayer lives, and uh, that we should always want God's will done in our lives, in earth, as it's in heaven. And I'll give you encouragement. Think about that. Jesus said, it is significant that the Father's will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus knows the nature of heaven. And his desire is for us to pray in such a way that that same atmosphere is here with us on earth. And so it's significant to him uh, that his will be done as it is in heaven. Let me give you a greater significance for us to, to want God's will done in earth as in heaven. Because here's the significance right here. We find it in the book of beginnings in Genesis chapter 3. You, 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 you know this scenario, but I'm going to give you a few verses so you can appreciate that we, we, we fell into a problem with being aligned with God's will. Genesis chapter 3, verse 3, uh, we pick it up here. If only, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. That's, that's, that's Eve's response to the devil. God said you must not eat of it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. And then the, the, the adversary, the devil speaks up and he says you won't die. The serpent replied to the woman, God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And verse 6 tells us when the problem started for us. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. She took some of the fruit and ate it. 
Uh, let me say it this way. She willfully and willingly took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. Let me say it this way. He willfully and willingly ate it too. And that's when our problem started. Our, it's not that we have have the opportunity to make choices and decisions willingly and willfully. It's how it aligns with God's will. Yes. And yes. so when Jesus gave a guideline for our prayer lives, he put a significant point that we need to consider for our days ahead. He said, thy will be done in earth as in heaven. So we need to consider why we do what we do as it aligns with or compares to the will of God. And, and growing up, I've heard many pray in my presence some of the old school prayers and many of them included in their prayer, if it be thy will. I think they were on good ground. Hallelujah. We may know willing, we now may willingly and willfully believe what God has provided for our unbelief, our sin, our rebellion. We may, the cure for it, there is a cure for it. We'll speak about it. And, and this sin, this rebellion that we have, doing our own thing is our self-will. One of our greatest challenges in life is doing what we want to do. Yes. Uh, the cure, the antidote, the answer uh, uh, is the grace of God. By his redemptive power, his being the propitiation for our sin, and that's his blood changes our perspective. Yes, yes. Huh. Hallelujah. Let, let me finish up by putting it to where you can grasp it and where I grasp it. And Sister Deidre shared this in, in one of the devotions and I locked into it because this is where the transformation takes place. Matthew 26, 36. This is when the decision was made for our salvation. For our lives to be right with God. To take us back to the original state from the Garden of Eve. And when Adam and Eve lost the connection with God. Jesus came to restore it. But it wasn't easy. Let me show you through the scriptures and we're done. Matthew 26, verse 36. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. You remember that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he said to his disciples, he said, sit here while I go over there to pray. I'll pause for a moment. Prayer is powerful in our lives. Don't ever be listed among those that are prayerless. You ought always, we ought always to pray and not grow weary. It was a practice that Jesus, the Son of God, yes. practiced in his life. So we shouldn't be any, we ought to pray more than he did. Yes. He said, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he began to anguish and to became anguished and distressed. That's significant to me. He went and prayed and he was, he was anguished and dis Jesus was, 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 it was a tough time for him to pray. And we'll find out why, because he was wrestling like we wrestle. Let me, Jesus was human just like we're human. So he, he wrestled with his desires and God's desires. And we're going to find that until the Lord returns. We're going to wrestle in our lives. But the answer is that Jesus gives us the help yes, he does. to yield to the will of God. Let's see how it's done. 
He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. On Wednesday night, we, we, we studied watch and pray. Watch and pray. We talked about watch and pray and why we should watch and pray. Jesus was telling them watch and pray because there were those that were coming to take his life and to come against him and his followers. And so they had to watch because they were threatening to kill him. So watch while we pray. But they went into a place that they normally went to pray and so it was known that they went there to pray and so they needed to guard themselves as they pulled away to pray with God. Now often we have to be watchful because the enemy comes to distract you and pull you out of your focus and your precious time with God. Watch and pray. Yes. Jesus said, oh, let him watch with me. He went on a little further and he bowed his face to the ground praying, My father, if it's possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. There's the answer. There's the solution coming for our salvation. Jesus had to deal with self-will. Just like we have to deal with self-will. But Jesus had a deeper call upon his life. He had a, a strong mandate. He came to deliver us. He came to do the Father's will. And he said, your will be done, not mine. And he said it because he was struggling because he didn't want to be separated from God. He didn't want to suffer something that no man knew that was to be separated from God. He had no knowledge of death. And so he was agonizing in his, agonizing in his humanity what that might be. And he, he really didn't want to do it, but he agonized over it. So much so that he did it three times. Uh, here's the scripture says, then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? So they were there for a while. Keep Watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. There's another admonition to us to stay prayerful because the enemy will come with temptations and challenges and trials to distract us from the will of God in our lives. Stay focused. Hallelujah. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. Amen, amen, amen. I pray that you will hear as I've heard from my own life. That should be our focus every time we're facing challenges in our lives. Even Ida, yes. all of the challenges we face, Tell the Lord your will be done. Yes, Often we don't know what's best for us. I know who knows what's best for me. And that is the Lord. And I say, Lord, your will be done. Yes, yes. In me, through me, and for me. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. And so he went a third time. Because he found them sleeping and they couldn't keep their eyes open. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. They need help just like we do. They needed help just like we do. Hallelujah. I believe that's why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to help us keep our eyes open. Keep us to watch, enable us to watch and pray as we ought. Uh, he said to them in verse 45, he came to the disciples and said, go ahead, sleep, have your rest. But then he said, but look, the time has come. The son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let us be going. Look, my betrayer is here. Mm -hmm. Judas was coming in. And so the time was, is, had come for him to go to the cross. The answer is... <laughs> Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. And you know the results thereof. He suffered a cruel cross. He died on the cross. They buried him in a tomb, borrowed tomb, but he rose again on the third day. 
all for our benefit. He did the Father's will so that we might be restored to the original state where we could do God's will as well. Yes. Hallelujah. My, my encouragement for you today. I read something as I was studying for this, and this was a gentleman who was, who was uh, a preacher back in the 1800s. And I saw this quote, and I thought this says it all. He says, my will, not thine, be done. Turned paradise into a desert. Listen to what he said. He's talking about Adam and Eve. My will, not thine, be done. Turned paradise into a desert. But then he said, thy will, not mine, be done. Turned the desert into paradise and made Gethsemane the gate of heaven. Uh, I like that because he, he, caught, he caught the vision, the view, the perspective of God is that it, Gethsemane brought us back to a place where the desert in our lives could enter us into the paradise of the kingdom of God when paradise was lost by self-willing Adam and Eve, deceived by the enemy of our soul. And so Jesus brought us back to right relationship with God. Yes, yes. Paul speaks to this, we're done. He says this in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. That's why he struggled at Gethsemane and being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, and because he did, God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, oh glory to God, every knee will bow and Everything in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Because he did the will of the Father. You'll see it throughout the New Testament. He came to do the will of the Father. Yes, yes. Let that be our commitment and mission yes. from this day forward. Yes, Not my will but thy will be done. Yes. Willingly and willfully to the will of God. God bless you. God keep you. The, the cure, the ability to walk in that is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and the work of Calvary. His death, burial, and resurrection brings transformation changing us from being self-willed to being God-willed. Amen? amen and amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Thanks for being with us today, and, and we pray God's protection and provisions yes. Yes. over all of you and all oh, of yes. us. And again, that the will of God be done in our lives and through our lives. Father, thank you for today. And thank you for this moment. Thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to share your word and to hear your word. Thank you for every man, woman, boy, girl, every household, every married couple, every single man, every single woman, everyone in his appointed place in his life's journey. May the mantle of your will be upon each one of us. And may that resonate in our soul, in our spirit, and yes, even in our mind, that the will of our God and creator 
be done in us and through us. May Holy Spirit help us to be reminded to, to grab hold to the high call of God to say, not my will, but thy will be done. The world pulls on us day in and day out with distractions and temptations and lies and all kinds of conveniences and all of those things that would draw us into self-will, doing that which pleases our souls, our minds, our flesh. Our desire is to be faithful to your call so that when we meet you, you say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Meaning that we have done your will. Thank you today for the help that we have by the death, burial, and resurrection of your son and the visitation and indwelling of your spirit to help us. We give you thanks and praise today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. It's good to have you with us. Keep praying one for another, checking on one another. We love you here, uh, and we love you in all of the places that you reside. We're trusting God as you're trusting God. And we'll see you next time, the Lord willing. <laughs> Glory to God. God bless you today. Amen, amen. Good to see you, Gerard.